Hey guys, John here with Cylinder Recyclers. Today we're going to talk about settling cylinders and what makes them different. As you can see, I have a size 3 acetylene here with a sidewall cut on exposing the porous mass, which we'll talk about in a minute. I also have an acetylene MC and an oxygen cylinder. Now these two cylinders are probably the typical cylinder you find in a home garage where someone has an oxygen acetylene torch. But acetylene comes in different sizes from small to large depending on application. But let's get back to what makes the acetylene cylinder different. Let's start with weight. When you begin to move the acetylene cylinder, it doesn't take long to realize that the acetylene is notably heavier than a high pressure cylinder. Now a lot of people believe that's because it's a flammable cylinder and it has a thicker sidewall, which is not true. This acetylene here, if, you, if you're looking at the sidewall, that only measures a little over an eighth of an inch thick, which means that this cylinder is more acceptable to dents and gouges. So guys, when you're moving around the shop, be careful not to hit them with a forklift or to drop them. Strike them with a hammer because those dents and gouges can damage the cylinder. Uh, dents actually damage this, this core, which we'll talk about in a minute, but the gouge can actually rip through the sidewall of the cylinder, causing a cylinder fire. So guys, be careful when you're moving them around. Next difference would be the valve. There's a notable difference between a high pressure valve and a settling valve. The, this here is called a PRD a pressure release device. This is a burst disc. Now, acetylene have their own, it's just a little different. It's called a GC3, sorry, CG3, which is a fusible plug. Now, the, the, the fuse plug, which we call in the industry, would be located in the neck of the cylinder, and the bottom of the cylinder, sometimes both. They're filled with lead, they melt at 212 degrees. Now, if this cylinder were to catch fire, the fuse plug would melt out, releasing the acetylene, keeping this cylinder from exploding. So guys, it's very important to check your, your, your PRDs when you're, when you're using them. This here is from a cylinder that we uh, received out of Arizona where temperatures were over 120 degrees and it didn't melt, but it actually pushed it up. Even though it was hot enough to melt, it actually pushed it up. So that's actually a dangerous thing because if it would have popped up, it would have uh, leaked a settling, which could have caused a fire. So guys, check your PRDs when you're working on it. Now, let's get to the uh, this porous mass, or the core, as we call it. This here is a uh, mid-90 cylinder. And so this is a lime silica mix. But say if this cylinder was made before 85, this would more than likely be asbestos. So that sometimes causes, uh, causes a problem when you go to dispose of an acetylene cylinder. Like I said, we can talk about that in a minute. But so you ask, why this porous mass or a core inside of an acetylene cylinder? Well, acetylene is unstable. Uh, and so it needs something to make it stable inside the cylinder so it doesn't blow up. So they pour this lime silica or the core into the cylinder and fill it with acetone. Now some of these cylinders can have as much as five to six gallons of acetone in them. But they fill it with acetone, which when the acetylene is pumped in, dissolves or absorbs the acetylene into the core and makes it stable. Now, that's where the dents come in, that I was talking about earlier come into play. When that cylinder is dented and it creates a void, you can actually have acetylene leak into that spot and it can cause an explosion inside the cylinder if it's hit too hard. So that's the reason why we haven't inspected or requalified. And when they requalify a cylinder, of course, they look at the outside, they're checking for dents and gouges, and they're measuring them to make sure that there's no damage to the core. They also, when you internal inspection, when they pull the valve out, they're looking to see the, the, the shape of the core, if it's uh, crumbly, if it's still in good shape. And if, if that's all okay, that cylinder is put back into service. But when that cylinder fails the visual or the internal test, it becomes scrap. Now, what to do with this scrap acetylene? Uh, there's many companies that stockpile them out back, which is not a good practice. Here at Cylinder Recyclers, we have recycled over 300,000 acetylene cylinders. We're the best at it. So, guys, if you're starting to stockpile these acetylene cylinders, you know what to do with them, give us a call. 